<laughs> so, um, yes, thanks, Simon, for, for your very warm words. And um, it's, it's really great to be here. I, I love coming to the Botanics. Uh, yes, um, representing the Scottish Government, but not really of the Government, Chief Scientific Advisor. The best thing about the job description is that I'm a licensed dissident in government. So I'm there to challenge, I'm there to, to bring the evidence and to, to push it firmly towards government. So really a channel between science, evidence and policy making. So that's what brings me here today. And I'm, I'm really keen to be that channel. And that's why I enjoy working with botanics and, and keen to make closer engagement with the, the botanical society because just the importance of the plant atlas if we're going to achieve the successes we need in terms of nature restoration if we're going to get policies that really are effective we have to bring science to bear and we have to engage with society citizen science what's represented here in this room is therefore absolutely key to our success going forward so we we live and work, I think many of us in, a, in an amazing country with extraordinary landscapes like the one behind me. But they do raise a lot of questions. Is this a nature positive landscape? Is it a climate positive landscape? What will it look like in 2050? What should it look like in 2050? I expect there's lots of views in this room looking at that picture. So. There are some really intriguing discussions to be had, but we're all aware that this landscape is not going to look like it does now in the future, that we are breaching our safe operating space for humanity. This, uh, this figure here shows this concept of multiple dimensions that define the safe operating space for humanity. We need to stay within that green zone or below that boundary in terms of all these dimensions. Climate change gets a lot of, of airtime, a lot of media and government attention. But as, as you know, in this room, uh, the challenges we face are, are beyond but connected to climate change. We have concerns about biosphere integrity and land system change. And of course, I think that's where the, a lot of the interests here are reflected. But we're aware that there are changes in our freshwater flows, in the biogeochemistry of our planet, uh, that the issues around novel entities like endocrine disruptors and microplastics and then impacts on, on the atmosphere and the ocean. It's our job, it's our challenge, is to bring our planet and our nation into the safe operating space. That's what sustainability means to me. But we have a, a great challenge in order to get there, and, and part of that is to understand exactly where we are and to define better what the safe operating space is. And here the state of nature reports have, have been very helpful, uh, very welcome, although pretty sobering and potentially um, depressing reading, but important that these data are presented. So I was reading the, the new report, I think just came out last month with great interest and noticed that the, a great step forward from the 2019 report is to see the distribution of flowering plants is now part of the state of, nature, state of nature report and that is as i understand firmly connected to the plant atlas 2020 and the work undertaken by you and others so it's a concerning statistic that decline in distribution uh, but it's important that those data are out there and can support effective policy making going forward the scottish biodiversity strategy is is the government's design uh, for nature going forward and by 2045, policies will be in place and enacted to restore and regenerate biodiversity across land, freshwater and seas. Our environment, habitats, ecosystem species will be diverse, thriving, resilient and adapting to climate change. And that biodiversity will be part of a sustainable economy connected to communities. People will be intimately connected and recognize that that society and people are embedded in nature. These policy goals are very strongly linked to the Convention on Biological Diversity and the broader international framing of these problems. Uh, and we have uh, metaphors like bending the curve. We, we recognize we're on a downward trajectory and have been um, since records or detailed records began. 
uh, and we're, we're now approaching what should be an inflection point to move us towards a richer, diverse future. But of course, there's, there's real risk that we fail to achieve that. And that's why uh, the mission uh, of this group and the Plant Atlas 2020 is so important. Part of the, the key underlying planks that's going to show us are we succeeding and how, how we can succeed. And in order to do that, we've been spending a lot of time recently in government around nature targets. The idea here is that if we can set effective targets to support that strategy, they'll allow government to assess if the vision has been achieved. So that, that high level vision needs to have some underpinning targets that we can look at, we can monitor and that we can actually have a, a statutory obligation. The, the analogy there is the climate change plan has that net zero commitment year, year after year. The climate change committee reviews progress towards net zero, and we can imagine that something similar will be set up to support our evaluation of progress towards the biodiversity strategy goals. But there's no single target for nature. It's too complex, too diverse, too multi scale. So the, the development of the vision is something that's ongoing. And it will drive cross governmental and societal change. It will be something that we can communicate. We need to be able to communicate to society, to parliamentarians, so they understand uh, what these targets represent. And, and they will need to be connected to robust indicators. So, Plant Atlas 2020, and I guess its ongoing components uh, will be really key. So science is vital to support agile and adaptive policy and citizen science sits right in there. This is how I see the science policy agenda uh, developing over a, a, an, a, an agile cycle. For instance, an awareness that peatlands across Scotland, really important habitat are degraded, has come from scientific research on their, their extent and condition. Science is, uh, is having set policy goals to restore nature and restore our peatlands Science can bring forward the potential effective uh, restoration techniques like ditch blocking. We need scientists, citizen scientists, to then monitor the success of these activities. Are we regenerating uh, the natural ecosystems? And then we need the, the broader survey data to see what's, what's the impact on nature. Are we seeing uh, definitive and thriving nature? So this sort of cycle of interaction where policymakers, practitioners, scientists are all working together uh, to push forward our agenda is so important. So to close, uh, I'm enormously impressed with the Plant Atlas 2020 and the work that you're doing. I can't imagine how we would we would make progress without the sort of endeavours of the, the amateurs and professionals alike. It's an extraordinary achievement. So I, I'm really grateful for the work you're doing. And, and to me, it's going to provide fundamental indicators for evaluating nature targets and the natural environment bill will be going forward will succeed on the basis of the data that you provide partly there's of course we have to do more we have to engage with citizens and get society on board and again a citizen science approach can really support us in that go out and talk to your neighbors your family get them interested and excited about nature and there's lots of opportunities for instance just talking to Cambridge University, they flew LIDAR flights, laser scanning flights over the Cairngorms last year. And it just struck me that if we could connect citizen science with those larger projects and think about mapping of habitats and creating greater detail by fusing all our knowledge, uh, that will create even greater steps forward. So many thanks for the invitation. Really pleased to be here. And I wish you all a, a really productive and excellent conference. Thank you so much.